Yep. Let's go ahead and get in 35. Like I said, I don't like this. And when I'm at home, I don't skip Scripture. I'll read it. But in here, we just want to go ahead and get through it. And... Okay, there's 36. All right, well, we'll start in 35. Uh, well, hold on. I got 35. I, 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 I can just read through. Right, you got 35? Yeah, I, just yeah I got 35. I'm going to read... Uh, I'm going to read 35 down to 40. And then somebody else can pick up at 40 because it's fixing to get really, really good and interesting. All right. And some of them of understand. Oh, uh-huh. what about this here, Billy? Uh-huh. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end. Wait a minute. I want to back up to 33. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they... Now you guys need to underline that in your Bible if you want to. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And remember that word flatteries because... Just remember it or underline it. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try to make and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it, because it is yet for a time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will. Now what king are we talking about right here in this, in this verse? Satan. <coughs> now we're in prophecy. Satan. Now we're in prophecy. Satan, what are you talking about? You sure? Yeah, he's going to do it going well. Okay. Friends reading that. All right. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things about against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that is determined shall be done. So that... Verse of scripture right there tells you who the subject in that verse is. It is the Antichrist. Because he's going to exalt and magnify himself above every God. All God. All God. There's not but one God. We know there ain't but one God. And he is going to try to make you think that he is God. And in Jesus Christ, he's going to try to pretend that he is him. All right. And I don't want to go off on that, but I might in a minute. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women... (laughs) <laughs> nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Let me stop right here in verse 37, and I've got to say this right here. In this day and time, back uh, when Billy and Debrix and Mike and my mom and maybe Aunt Peggy were growing up, you, har- you hardly... I don't know. I wasn't around in the 60s and all that. I don't know what you guys done. I could just imagine from... Some of the stuff you've told me, but uh, you hardly ever heard of homosexuality. Is that right? That's true. That is right. All right. Now think about that just for a minute. Back in the 60s and the 70s, and I know I'm going to jump ahead here a little bit, but that was kind of a turning point for our Bibles. And we're going to go over that. Never heard nothing about it. Don't tell after Vietnam War. Well, you never heard anything. I'm, I'm assuming that you never heard really much about homosexuality and this and that and other. Gotcha. Now today, there's preachers. <laughs> mm. There is men. I don't even want to call them preachers. There's men that will marry homosexuals. Now, if that's a preacher, I'll kiss your tail. That's no preacher. That's no man of God. No, there was just a preacher suspended from the pulpit because he married his son and his son's boyfriend. Well, he's not a preacher. He's not much of a man. So, and 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 the point I'm trying to make. Not a man of God. You're talking. Right. And and the point I'm trying to make here is in verse 37. It said, "Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women." It was made plain to us, told us in the book of Genesis, to be fruitful and multiply. Now. That scripture really stands out to me and lets me know, hey, how close we are to the time of the end. And it's just, not this just one verse of scripture, but why would that be in the Bible that, that a man's not going to have a desire for a woman? You know, that's, that's throughout the Bible. 
You know, in, in, in Romans, I think, ain't it in Romans, you know how they leave their natural state, this now and the other? That tells you, plainly, you just got to, like we was talking earlier, just got to get in your Bible, open it up and read it, and the Bible will explain itself, and Scripture will back up Scripture. 100% of the time it will. All right. Well, what does it say in Deuteronomy and Leviticus? Man don't do that. Man don't do that. Man but he, but he don't, this Antichrist does not desire a woman, nor does he desire anything to take, because he is going to try to uh, trick us into thinking that he is God. He don't need anything but himself. But the he ones in this class, right, the what? He is Jesus Christ. But he's not really. Right. But the ones in this class will be prepared. <coughs> I guarantee if you pay attention, you'll be prepared to know what to look for. So, all right. But in his estate shall he honor the God of his forces and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. God specifically says, you don't set up and you don't worship a wood. We've done been over this in one, chapters one, two, and three, and stuff like that. You don't you don't set up a piece of wood or a gold and all that and worship that. You don't do that. And here he is, you know, he's he's honoring something here with gold and silver. It's the Bible specifically explains that to you guys. It says it right here. All we gotta do is read it. All right. And in 39 here, thus shall he do in the most strongholds. With a strange, what is the most strongholds? Where's that at, Billy? The Temple Mount. The Temple Mount. That's what that is. Thus he shall do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. Any questions? I'd like to say something about this. Uh, say it. This Temple Mount. I think it's getting ready to happen if it happens. In May, John Kerry is going to get that peace treaty signed. He said he'll have it done by 2014 in May. If that does happen, you said you're away from Armageddon. That's it. Hey. You're there. And, and Israel was formed and signed May the 14th, 1948. Right. Hey, and if it's going to happen, it's going to happen May the 14th. You think so? mm -hmm. If that peace treaty is signed, no. we're there. We're in. We're in. We're in. The we said you're right there. So whenever you plant more fruit trees, you don't have time to pick them. Create. Hey, and listen, got all input here. If you got questions, if you got something to say, say it. Because like me and Mike were talking earlier, you know, we won't. We... You know what really surprised me about the Temple Mount? Do y'all know how many acres is on the Temple Mount that they've been fighting over for all these years? 36. 36 acres. That's all it is. <laughs> Who's going to do that? All right. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Is the Antichrist the one that gains world peace? Do it now. I, I can't hear. Isn't you. the Antichrist the one who gains world peace? Is well, the he question. Will. Well, yeah, he yeah he, he will. will. Yeah, he, he'll he'll come. Here. Here. No, I don't want to say it's something. Not John Kerry. Now, whenever this devil comes. No, 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 no. You Billy was saying that John Kerry is, is going to get his sign. He's going to get this peace agreement signed. He's going to be the With one. Palestine and Israel. Now, I don't know for sure if that's John Kerry. That's some of Billy well, stuff, but I don't know. Well, he's Secretary of State. He, well, he's Secretary of State. Well, he, he this started come with Bill Clinton in his time, trying to get him have peace over there. So right. they fight all the time. They sign mm -hmm. something, then they go back to fighting. And so what they've done here, they decided, well, we'll just give the Palestinians part of this temple and the Israelis part of it. It's in the Bible. And it's in the Bible. And so they're going to sign an agreement. They're going to put so much pressure on the Israel to sign an agreement. And, this, and the UN and, will keep the peace between the heathens and the Christians. But I'm going to tell you something now. When this, when this devil will come, <laughs> all the fighting and all is over with, and he sits on that temple mount. Uh, according to what we can dig out, he's got five months here root. But this son's going to slick. He's good looking. He, he's going to be a chicken in every pot. He's going to mm -hmm. be many that's in debt. Go, go to him. He's going to pay them all because he wants to worship him. They have to buy down worship him. This devil's going to be hard to get around unless you've got Jesus Christ and you understand this. Don't this devil's going to deceive many. The whole world will whore after him. Yes, sir. All, this, all these people on the news and all that don't strictly believe in God, they're going to be right there with you. Now, this, this ain't going to be pushed on you. I mean, it's going to be pressured that you, that you worship this devil. And you're going to have to be in this Bible and with God to get around this devil. But he just got five on. No. 
I don't believe that. Well, that would not be wrong. I don't believe the Christians are going to have to go through the rapture. Oh, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hold on just a minute. Oh, let's just, let's just, let's just, yeah, but that, but, but, but we're going to get to that. We just we just want to get through. I, listen, when I said all input welcome here, let's stick to the verses. Let's not jump ahead here. So well, we're. Look, go- I mean, he kind of led up to it when he said. No, he's not. No, he's no, just no, telling you. He, no, no, he's just telling you what what, what to be prepared for here. Well, you know, he's just really quoting Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. All we're talking about right now yeah. is don't be deceived. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Don't be deceived. Yeah. The yeah. main yeah. thing is this devil, that's the sixth trump, before Christ, he's going to be the one to try to steal your soul. He's going <laughs> to lie to you, he's going to do everything. And this son's going to, he ain't going to have no pitchfork, look like he's uh, been buried, dug up. He's going to be a, a good looking person. And he's going to fool me. Well, think about it, Mama. I mean, who is Satan? God made him. Have you ever read Ezekiel 28? What did he tell him? His name is Lucifer. I, I know he's going to be, he set this up, up like a Christ. And many that are here are going to, and you told me not to go any further, are, are going to be swept, just swept by him. Just think, yeah. oh, he's the answer. He, he, yeah, that's peace, right. Peace, 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 peace. Right, and, like, and, and that's the same. This is where I strongly believe. That what they're, who they're talking about at that time they profess to be Christians if you're an honest Christian I've said this before it means you have to have Christ in your heart you have to have Christ in your mind and you're, because if you divide the two that's what this Antichrist is going to try to do he's going to try to divide your head from your heart because without those two together he will turn you against Christ because when you read the scripture you understand and you understand Christ God judges you by your heart, not by your mind. But you will not understand God's word or his meanings if you don't have the same love in your mind that you do in your heart and bring them together as one. And if you do have that together as one, and you're really strong in your belief in Christ, the Antichrist will not be able to change the way you feel. It's those that aren't deep rooted in Christ who only want to play at being Christian. That's right. That Look how many people know the word of God. Now hold on a minute. Ben, do you have a question? Oh, I was just wondering, was it the actual Antichrist that was supposed to do the uh, the treaty? I think so. I, I, I do. I, I, I think so. I think, I think that he's, you know, like Deborah said, that he's coming, you know, peace, peace. And we, we all know that. And, you but know, listen, know but, but here's the thing, you know, a lot of people probably think, and I thought like this for a long time. Well, of course, well, anybody's going to be able to re- recognize the Antichrist. He's going to come down here, you know, and he's, he's going to be chopping heads and stabbing. And, you know, he's going to be writing 666 all over, you know, and this, that, and that. But he's not doing that. You know, when my eyes was open to this, he's not going to do that. He's coming as Jesus Christ. He's coming as a loving person. And just like Matthew 24 states, and I guarantee it, I guarantee it. When, I'm going to ask you a question. And again, I'm going to pick on you because you're my mom. All right? Matthew 24 is talking about, and listen, when it's talking about, when it's talking about two, two men in the field, one's taken and, one, and one's left, what are they talking about? I just want to hear, just, I just let me hear one, one, her opinion. I always thought it was the rapture. Okay, well, that's wrong. The, one, the first one taken is going to be taken to Jerusalem to bow down and worship that Antichrist. The one that stays is the Christian. The true Christian, like Mike's talking about, the true Christian, as, as the one that knows God's word. Study this, I want to learn. If I'm wrong, then I want my heart to be open. I want my heart That's to right. be open That's to right. my mind. Yeah. But right now, uh, right now, I just have to just tell y'all. Right now, I don't believe that way, Dustin. Well, then you don't believe the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, Lonnie. You'll say that. I don't know how to take please, her away. Hold on, please. I'm going to say You come. You come. No. Come along. I'm coming to Come along. Well, yeah. The Come only along. reason she said Come this, along. and this is like a lot of people, when you don't have a complete or full understanding of God's Word, and this is, that is a good example right. of why you have right. to get into, like you and Dustin and I were talking about, you have to get into a good, honest Bible study. Because if you just get into one of these, it's just somebody reads Scripture, and when they get done, good night, I'll see you next week. That's not a Bible study. Yeah. Carl, I understand where you're coming from, honey. And it's, it is, but there is a lot of misunderstanding. You can't do it on your own. Just don't give up. But it doesn't mean you're wrong. It's it just means that right now you're not a place. I'm talking about a whole lot of us. Yeah, I shouldn't. I apologize. I shouldn't have said you didn't believe the Bible. But. 
You can hire your mom. Yeah, I, yeah. but like I said, I, I apologize. I should not have said you don't believe the Bible. No, that's but but what we got to remember, I'm class. Right. We have to have an open mind when we come in here because like we talked about last week, you know, especially like Billy and Debro, and, and I don't mean to pick on the older folks. Watch it. <laughs> uh, I fight back. You know, you know, when you're taught one way all your life, it is hard to get your mind changed. You know, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to go ahead and give you my testimony right now. Uh, I remember the day that Billy Smith came to my house and said, Dustin Jackson? You believe in that rapture? Well, of course I do. I sat on my tailgate. I said, of course I do, Billy Smith. He said, ain't going to happen. I said, you're crazy. I said, you've lost your mind, Billy Smith. You're crazy. I said, I've been taught this all my life. He said, get in God's Word and figure it out for yourself. It's in there. He'd done the same thing to Devers. Me and Devers had long talk. Two years talking about this deal. That's right. But well, Everybody I talk to except these two think they're going to be raptured away. I had to get my mind to a place where I could say, okay, I'm not going to believe Billy. I'm not going to believe my dad. I'm not going to believe my granddad. I'm going to get in God's word. I'm going to believe my God. Because that's, I'm, I'm a professing Christian. Let me see what he's telling me. That's what changed my mind. It wasn't Billy. It wasn't Deverick's. It wasn't the end time magazines that I get. It was God's word that said, hey boy, pay attention. In Matthew chapter 24, my Bible has got it, parentheses. Whoever has an ear, let him understand. Let him hear. Let us hear God's word right tonight. Because if plan A, <laughs> if plan A don't happen, what are you going to look for? The Bible tells us. And we'll go on and we'll figure it out what to look for. Well, well, I'm well saying, hold on. I'm saying that before, before now, before the time of the fig tree, if they was a Christian, it really probably didn't make no difference about that. Right. Because they yeah. died before all that comes. Right. But now, at, the, at this fig tree, we're in the fig tree time. Everybody understand what the fig tree is? God promised the Israel about uh, when he brings back in the and back in the sequel, that that generation shall not perish for the second return of Jesus Christ. Everything in the Bible has to be fulfilled that fig tree. Well, now we're in the fig tree. And you're going to see the fig tree time right now. In other words, the last generation. And now it's important now. All right, let's get on. Let's let, let's go ahead and get on in through here. Uh, ben, you want to pick up in forty? Hold on a minute. Does anybody have any questions? If you got a question, ask it. Everybody believes that Satan's coming. Go ahead. I'm just looking, to make sure. What about you, Christy? Okay, Cindy. No, I was just. I think that what I had asked Ben about the peace tree. I didn't. About the Antichrist uh, making, you know, world peace. So that treaty that he's you're talking about right. is just between two countries. Yeah, between Israel and um, Palestine, with Israelites and Palestine. Okay. That's all it's about. But it's real important. Right. Important. I understand it's just. Now, now it, when that devil comes after all this war stuff, and he and really his five months don't start till he sits in in God's temple. Temple. Right there. That's that we call it documentation of abomination. Abomination of desolation. Of desolation. Yeah. That's when that starts. Right there. And that's been three and a half years. Right. Three and a half years. Mm -hmm. He'll come in there and he'll sit on the Temple Mount. He'll play Jesus Christ, or God. And at that time when he's playing that there, the whole world will go to see him. They will follow him. They'll think he's Christ. <clears throat> Most people, the Bible tells you. If I, didn't, if I didn't shorten the time, even my elect people, the people that knows the Word of God, because this man's going to be perfect. He's going to have everything going for him. But see, the world since that we have gone through 2.3 billion people killed, you know, right. all this. Whatever they, happens, I don't know whether it be nuclear weapons or what, but it's going to be well, something more than to die. kill that many people. And the whole world going to be tore up over this. And, and they're going to be ready to worship something like that. Because, they, you know... Well, let's put it like this right here just for a minute before we get back in 40. Mike, you said you was in Nam. Sam, you, you, you've got military history. All right. And I know what you've done in the military. And I couldn't even to begin to imagine what Vietnam was like. But you was there. You was right there. Now, it just amidst all that blood and guts and just bad time over there and people... Dying and getting killed and this and that and the other was people and I'm just asking questions because I don't know was people looking was people 
if the Antichrist had to come right then, right there to Vietnam, all right, and brought peace in that land right there, and said, come, I'm Christ, come. Given that situation in the time of war, when all these people, ain't gonna, ain't gonna, they're hungry, all right? They, they, just bad stuff's happened to them. They're missing limbs. Half their family's dead, this and that and other. Do you, you kind of see where I'm going? Yeah. I right. see where you're going, but you have to understand something because you're way off. You're, I'm going to tell you this, and I hope you understand. You're way off base. I know what your point is, but you're wrong. In something like that, and believe me, I spent 23 months in the jungle fighting and, and seeing too much of that. When you're going through something like that, the only thing that you can accept or would accept, anything at that moment that will stop the bloodshed, the murder, rape, whatever's going on, because nothing that's going on around you is good. And I don't know any human being that could accept that much. Like I said, one of the reasons I got medical discharge is because I saw so much death I couldn't handle it no more, and I went to hell. But what I mean by that is that I came back and, and uh, was shot in my arm, put me out until I got to the States because I was so far. But what I'm saying is, you're, you're asking a question, I'm looking for a decision of what a person would do if paradise showed up and you've been going through hell for so many months. And this person, this person with this antichrist we're talking about, that's what he's really going to present to the people, a paradise. Right, that's what I'm asking. Or, if that had happened in Nam. I, yeah, because it would have ended the torment and hell go. that we were going through and any human being would have accepted anything at that time. That's the point I was trying to make. Right, okay. That's the point I was trying to make. A mist, and I was just using Nam for a yeah, reference no, because I, just I, earlier you told me you was there. Now just imagine, and we know, you know, we we know what Nam was like. You know, I, I don't know personally. You do. We've seen TV. We've seen. We could imagine. Okay, just imagine that happening in America, That's happening cool. that in America, and in Great Britain, and somebody that can give you the answers, saying, don't worry about it, Carol. Don't worry about it, Ben. Don't worry about it, Sam. Don't worry about it, Chris. I've got the answers. I've got the answers. Right here, just come. And I've got it. He's going to imitate Christ. He's got your mind at that he's point. Got, yeah, he's got your mind at that point. Well, the whole world's going to want peace. And the, and the Bible specifically says, the whole world will be, would be deceived if Christ did not intervene. So that's what I'm saying. We've got to know what to look for. And I've, I've went off on that enough. So let's go ahead, Ben, in 40. Program two, what? You know, just go to, just go to 45. <laughs> My throat's hurting. I've done talked so much. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him, and the king of the north shall... Is that the wrong one? Yeah, you're, yeah, right. yeah you're right. Okay, the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, horsemen with many ships, and he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. He shall also enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape from his hand, Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Ammon. He shall stretch out his hand against these countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over the precious things of Egypt. Also the Libyans and Ethiopians shall follow at his heels. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to, yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. All right. Again, we're talking about the Antichrist. Uh, and what, I'm just going to read you my notes right here. Instead of trying to go off the top of my brain, I'm just going to read you my notes. You know what what, what I had wrote down here. Uh, the Holy Roman Empire. How many times have we heard that in here? A lot. A lot. It's raised its head six times in the, in the past. Dominique. Right now, it's trying to raise its head for the seventh and final time. All right. Are we all in agreement that there will not be a separation of church and state at this time? Well, we spoke about that last week. Yeah, we spoke about that last week. And the Catholic Church, the Vatican and all that, they're going to be back in this military power, which is the king of the north. Okay. Uh, That's Germany. You know, the yeah, Germany the is... The north is so good. Germany. Germany in the 27 countries, the old Europe. Roman Empire, called the European Union. Okay. I'm going to read you my notes here. 
Uh, the Holy Roman Empire, led by, by, led by Germany, is raising its head for the seventh and final time. The battle in these last few verses here is talking about a German-led military with the help of the Roman Catholic Church waging war with the King of the South. The King of the South is Iran and her allies. Uh, Egypt? Well, uh, Libya? But, all that right now. Syria, even Syria was a man. Russia, China. Russia, China, yes. Because we can't never forget about this, like Devick said, about, uh, said something about it just a minute ago, about this 200 million man army, you know. This plays into effect here in these, in these last few verses here in Daniel 11. I believe China could do that right now. China, China is probably capable of doing that, and they're probably going to link up with Russia and this and that and the other. And, and I think I've read where they've lifted their... Um, their ban on children bearing. Remember, they used to have it. Yeah, they have. Yeah, so there you go. Another piece to the puzzle. So, and this country has been blessed with God and been strong. And now we've got a president. He's cutting the military back. I read the paper this week where they're going to cut 30 or 40 helicopters from the National Guard of Tennessee. And, and the men that fly them, serve some fly them, and all that. I don't know, a thousand or so of them. So, this country here is backing up all the time, going to get weak and weak and weak, and we might not be involved with it. I don't know. but not there. I don't think that we will but be there. During this time, what I've understood from him and from uh, uh, Arnold Murray is that the Russians decide to bend weeks a week during all this tribulation time that they're going to take Alaska back because they've always been mad because they feel like we uh, pretty much stole it, didn't get much for it. So they invade Alaska. And that's where them. A hundred eighty pounds of box ice. Is that the way you understand it? That's the way I understand it, yeah. Where the white out. You ain't never, huh? never heard this, Andy. Huh? You ain't never heard this about the hundred and eighty pound talent a talent of ice. Hundred and eighty pound talent? It's a hailstone. Hundred and eighty pound blocks. And wife thrust your army out and invade Alaska. Alaska. Uh, you ain't never heard that. But I got it on tape but we it, freezes them harder than it, But here's the thing. Remember. When all this stuff is going on, it's going to be interesting. Just to remember mm -hmm. that the best thing is still yet to come. Right. And that is the true Christ to come back. He is coming, <clears throat> but this has to happen first. That's prophecy. It has to happen first, and we're going to go over that next week why this has to happen first. It's in First and Second Thessalonians, it's there. We're going to go over it, but before we wind up, Daniel, we need to go ahead and get in 12, and i got something to say about 12 real quick, but do you guys understand? If you don't understand, that's fine, because I am stay about half confused all the time myself anyway. Do you guys well, I understand? Say, I want to say something about this here. Well, go ahead. On this here. If you go to Psalms 83, it'll tell you that these countries is going to come in alliance with the North. Go to Psalms what? 83. 83. It tells you that some of these countries gonna to come together and come in line with the North. But it's Did kind you know of that? this this story is 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 kind of like Israel all through the Bible time back when they was facing vast enemies and and God would intervene and confuse the enemies. They kill one another. It's about the way I said. Well, same thing. Revelation chapter nine tell you one part of mankind is gonna be killed that, when the sixth trumpet blows. When the sixth trumpet blows, Satan will come. The four demonic angels in the great Euphrates River, which Sam probably had his feet down in there, and he washed his feet in it. I swear a minute. Listen. Now, when God released them, they prepared for the iron time and everything. That's when one part of mankind is going to die. We all going to see this. And it's going to be our time. But anywhere I can look in the Bible, the United States is not there. Well, look here, wow. Billy, I don't mean to cut you off, but go let's go ahead and get through 12, and then we can summarize 11 and 12, okay, and if we got questions, we can ask them and all that. But one thing real quick, in 12, you, you kind of need to back up, remember from last week, and read 10 and 12 together, uh, because Daniel had a dream, a, well, a vision, he's seen a vision in chapter 10, and the vision is not explained until chapter 12. So we'll go ahead and get into, get into this. And basically, the vision that he had, the reason he was so troubled, remember Daniel stays sick all the time because of all these visions. You know, Daniel was all the time down on the ground puking and he was sick as a dog because of all these, all these visions. So 
the vision that he's had in, in 12 is what is going to befall his people in the latter days. And Daniel couldn't understand this vision. And we're, we're going to read it. But that is the vision that what is going to happen, that's why the, the, the vision that Daniel seen is what is going to befall his people in the end of this age. And we're going to read some scripture and in chapter in verse four, it's we're going to read that. Uh, I, I, th- does anybody want to read? I'll read. I'll read. I'll read. I'll read five. I'm not that. Huh? I'll read verse five. How's that? Go ahead. At the time, Michael shall shall stand up, the great prince who stand and watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to the, to that time. At that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. He's talking about the book of life. And many of those who sleep in, in the dust of the earth shall awaken, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightest of the firmament, the firmament and the, those who turn many to, to righteousness like the stars are forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the word and sealed the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Then Daniel looked, and there stood two (coughs) others, one on this river bank and the other on the other river bank. Okay, Doug. All right, Uh, and I'll take off on on five there. But one thing in in four, it says here at the end of that, it says... uh, to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And I do believe this. That's true. That some of this stuff, a lot of this, well, I'm going to say most of this stuff, I'm going to say 99% of this stuff, this prophecy, was not understood back 20, 30 years ago. Amen. Because every one of us sitting in here tonight are sitting in here on our own accord. Nobody brought us here but ourselves. Okay? But, and you know what that tells me? We have a hunger and we have a desire and a want to to know what's in here. Right. Nobody forced us to be here. Just like me and you was talking earlier, Mike. Nobody forced us to be here. We have a desire to be here. And you know what we're doing? We are gaining knowledge. Whether our knowledge is incorrect or not, we're in here and we're trying our best as humans, as Christian humans, to decipher God's Word. And we're trying to divide God's word to make sure we're right. Now, if we're wrong about some of these countries, so be it. We're here. And I've told Chris this a million times. I'd rather be wrong and in God's word than not be in it at all. So, I know some people ain't going to agree with some of the things that are how we teach this prophecy. And that's okay because it's okay to disagree. But every one of us in here tonight can agree on one thing. That we are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And He is our Lord and Savior. And no matter, and no matter when we go through this bad time, if you come out of that bad time alive, <laughs> day one of your life starts because you're going to be in the Millennial Kingdom. So it doesn't really matter what happens to this physical body. My Bible tells me that fear the one that can kill the body and the soul. Second death. Satan cannot kill your soul. He may be able to kill your physical body, but he cannot kill your soul. So you you know, I have no reverence for him at all. None at all for him. Actually, he kind of makes me mad that he's going to set himself and try to play Jesus Christ. But I, you know, that's that's my opinion. So uh, he has to do that too. But he has to do it's prophesied, he has to do it. But still, you know what it it, it, it but here in, in verse four, knowledge shall be increased. And I believe that God, like we was talking earlier, Mike, that God is opening some of our eyes to this prophecy. And it's just where you're at with your relationship with Christ or what you understand. And that's okay. If maybe I don't know as much as Mike. Or maybe I don't know as much as Ben. That's okay. I'm working on my I'm working on my relationship with my Savior daily, and That's right. He will let me know what I need to know on His time. 
No, Billy and Deborah and Mike and Ben and Sam and everybody in here could tell me, Dustin, this is this. Well, this is what this means. Until God opens my eyes, I'm on His time. Amen. Mike. Amen. If I may. <laughs> Thank all the people that are sitting in this room right now. Like you say, we wouldn't be here if we didn't have the desire to learn. We're all hearing what each and every person is saying. But I'll guarantee you that each and every one of us collectively are hearing it in our hearts the way we perceive it by God's message to us. But the important thing is that when it's all said and done, we know the direction that God wants us to take. And it's an even though we're here in a group, it's an individual journey that each of us must take on our own. And when I say on our own, I'm talking about the relationship between us and Christ. We take it together in a group like this because that's how you grow in the knowledge that God's given to us in this book. It's the only way you get it. You cannot do it on your on your own. That's right. That's why God. It's, it, God's book is a mystery book because it, each and every time, even myself, when I do the study by myself, and I read the same scripture sometimes over and over, each time it depends on the frame of mind I'm in and the stage of my heart is. I can still get a different meaning for that specific scripture, and I know if it happens to me, it happens to a lot. But the end product is is how we uh, the, the strongest relationship we have with Christ will give us the most understanding and the knowledge of Christ that we gain. And actually, you're right. And the strongest relationship that we have with Christ is determined by us. By, that's why he says pray unceasingly. Because that's the communication between us and Christ. Is when you have private prayer, collective prayer, whatever. It may. When you're speaking to God on a one-on-one -on -one basis, that's where your relationship with God grows. And you know, here's the thing. And here, here's the thing. If you've got your mind on God... If you've got your mind on Christ, it, God got his mind on you. God's got his mind. Listen, that's the thing. God's got his mind on us all the time. We're his children. That's great. He loves us and he expects the same thing from us. He wants us. That's why he created us. Right. To love him. Right. To do his will. If you have that connection and that relationship with Christ, how can we possibly do anything wrong or go wrong? It doesn't mean that we're not going to make mistakes. We're human. Go, doing something wrong, and when I say wrong, doing something against Christ is one thing. Making mistakes, because sometimes I open my mouth and still put my foot in. No, I do too. Making a mistake. But you have Christ God. in your heart. I don't see how you can do And when I say do something wrong, you're going against God's word. That's when you're doing something wrong. And here's the thing, and, I, and, and, I, and I've got to get in verse 5, but here's the thing. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle. And I can say this right here. Honest God, I can say this right here. My... My dad didn't have to tell me he was a Christian. He didn't have to tell me that. He lived that. He lived it in his everyday actions. And he was probably, besides Jesus Christ, he was my example. And I'm almost 40 years old now, and I'm just now starting to see kind of what he's... And you're still a baby. You know... Yeah, and I'm, I, and I'm just now starting to kind of see, like, why he lived that way, I, can, I guess. Because, you know, me and my dad spent a lot of time together in the biker field and this and that and the other. And, you know, I'd, I'd probably ask him some old dumb questions all the time. And he'd say, you know, don't, don't even think about that kind of stuff. You know, and I'd ask him some old silly stuff all the time, you know. And my dad was a man of few words. But anyway, I, I'm, 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 I'm seeing now where my – I'm starting to see – where my dad was coming from. Because you've taken the time to see You know, him. and like I said, if you have to tell somebody you're a Christian, <laughs> you, something's show. wrong. It should show. But, and I just hope that, and I, and I know what the word Christian means, it means to be Christ-like, but if I could ever be Go ahead and read. But then I, Daniel, look, and there stood two others, <clears throat> one on this riverbank and the other on that riverbank. All right. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long shall be the filament of, those, of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river. Then he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever. 
that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. And when the powers of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for these words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be pur purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. He told Daniel, shut it up, Daniel. It's not for your time, buddy. It's not for your time. It's close the book. You're not going to understand it. And Daniel didn't understand this. Uh, it, bothered him, didn't it? it bothered him. It bothered Daniel that he didn't understand it. And you know what, Billy? It bothers me too. If when I read something there and I can't get it figured out, it bothers me. Well, you, you got more uh, intelligent now. You, you know. But <laughs> here it is. Look, down here, in, we we got some numbers to deal with. Uh, Twelve. Blessed is he that wait. Well, eleven. The thousand uh, two hundred and ninety days. You got a chart on that there? No, so we know that the 1260 is the three and a half years. Yep. But there's an additional 30 days, which you and I have talked about all week. Um, there's really no definitive answer on that. Uh, there's a couple different theories out there about the cleansing. Um, you know, after the abomination of desolation, there will have to be a cleansing, which could possibly... The cleansing of the what? The temple. The temple, yeah, the temple. For, from where that Oana Christ was at. And now you think that... that, that uh, thousand two hundred nine days you think that's from the time they signed that treaty until he gets on that temple mount or i don't know i, I don't know about the numbers they will i mean the, the, the abomination of desolation is when when Satan he gets sits on the in the temple yeah okay. yes that's, that's how i understand that's that, that. That's, like that, that that's how i understand that's that it's called. god called that temple his his place yes and remember this christ is not coming back to an empty throne there's got to be somewhere to kick off. Which comes, yeah. which the 1335. Yeah. The, that, that may be, this is just a theory, research it for yourself. That may be that the additional 30 and the, and the additional 45 could possibly be the cleansing and the rebuilding. Possibly. What about all them that come with him as witnesses? Who's that? People that come on the white horses, the, the uh, elite, come with Christ. Something else I want to say, where's this throne coming from? Y'all know where, where, where uh, Christ is thrown at right now? Y'all know where it's at? Do any of y'all know where it's at? You talking about the one over in England? That's right. Everybody yeah, the Davidic throne. That's David's throne. Yeah. That's David's throne that Queen Elizabeth set up. Did y'all know that? And yeah. And it will be taken sure. back to the yeah. temple. Where do you get that at? I can show you that. I can show you an amazing thing about Jeremiah taking the throne to there. He, with God's help, he can. That's what he means. Yeah, but but look look here, Doc. Look here, R R R R last week. Remember, did, did you guys read uh, the first and second Kings and first and second Chronicles? It gives the it gives the history of the promise made to David by God that his throne will never be. It'll never perish. Yeah, it'll never perish. Yeah, it'll never perish. When, when uh, Jesus Christ comes, that David will be the king. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, I was watching TV the other night. I don't know where they went on, on to this, some of them books they got they read and found. Jesus Christ went with his uncle. Never mind, Billy. You don't have to show me. I already know what you're... What I'm saying. But most people he, don't he know about his, his, his uncle, his Queen mother's Elizabeth brother, brother, younger brother. Yeah. Old to I got a real good old to I got a real good they showed the mines and all that, and, and, the, and, and lead, and all it back over at Europe and sold it, I guess, back and forth till the time he went to preach in the 30 year old. Well, listen, we have finished up. Mama, you still with us? All right. <laughs> <laughs> we, have finished, we have finished the book of Daniel. Uh, like Chris said last week, we could have deciphered every word in this chapter but it would probably have taken us around 11 or 12 years and we can't do that 
We ain't got that long to be here. Well, no, but listen. Does, do you guys agree? Now, now that we're through this, and I, and I know we just now got through it just right now, but do you guys, what is your opinion? Because I really do want to hear it. What, from, from each one of you. I want, do you guys believe that this Antichrist is going to be here before Christ? It's, well, you got the six people yeah, you ask, the and they tell you the that Jesus is about to come first. Do, do what? Be it? Christ is supposed to come until the Antichrist, the man of sin, is revealed. Right. Right. Well, it, like right. Yeah. Yeah. it tells you Second Thessalonians. And you know, chapter, but here, got to be revealed. but here through, you know, back back in seven, back in really chapter seven is when we really got into the. Uh, the beast and all the the symbolic meanings of this and that and other, and really all that is is pointing towards Antichrist. And, and I don't know why it was wrote down like this. It, it just was. Uh, and I think a lot of people stay away from books like this, like like away from Daniel and away from Revelation, is because I don't think that they. I'm not going to say that they can't understand it. I don't think that they want to take the time to try to understand, all right, what is, you know, what is all this horns mean and this and that and the other, you know? I, I, I think people, I think it scares people away from it, so they just would rather not deal with it. But, you know, here's the thing, we got to deal with it. It's easier to believe that we're going to be gone Bingo, right there, you said it right there. Say that, say that again. Is that tradition? Is that coming from Canaan? 26, you're going to reveal the uh, rapture theory, explode. Next, next, next week, I don't mean to cut you off. Next week, since we, since we did go through 11 and 12 tonight, next week, we, we, we're going to ex, we're going to ex, ex, uh, explore. explore this rapture theory, and we're going to explore the three most accepted theories. The, the 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 pre the pre tribulation rapture the mid tribulation or the post so now, and, and and the reason that we want to do this is because now we are through the book of Daniel and there's actually a fourth yeah the, yeah it is he's right the pre post mm-hmm. or, or the pre mid he's right okay well we'll get into that too then what's well, the whole thing about it but it? Hold, hold a minute before I lose my train of thought um, the the reason that we're going to go the reason that we're going to go through these three most or four most accepted theories after this book is because you know before do you guys understand the seventy week prophecy now and where where we're at in that week in the last yeah. week yes. You guys understand that? Did you did you even know that was in your Bible beforehand? I'm sure you knew it was in there, but did you understand it? You know, I didn't either until I got in there and read it. You know, but next week we're going to go through the the the, the rapture theory, and then then let's form our opinion after we 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 discuss God's word and let's see what the Bible explains instead of what the preachers have told us. And the Sunday school teachers, and our grandparents, and our parents. Let's see what let's see what our heavenly Father has to say about it. That's that's what I was going to say. Join us on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. for our end times Bible study. For more information, go to www.clarksvillelibertychurch.com.